Welcome to episode 81 of the Wilderness Podcast, your unofficial RuneScape podcast. I'm your host, Dills, and with me, as always, every single week, Deegan. Hey, guys. How's it going? Going's pretty good. How about you? Anything new and exciting going on over there? Real life? Not sure. not so much. I have a fire drill in two days. That'll be, that pretty much means I can't be near my apartment because fucking sirens go off nonstop for like five hours straight. What? Yeah. It's like just for like fire testing stuff. Just a stress test in case there's like a five hour fire going on in the apartment building. Yeah. It's super annoying because like, well, I mean, I can like be at my apartment, but like what happens is it goes off and then it'll go off for like that awkward amount of time as in like I'll get up to go like mute my alarm and then it stops just before I do that. And I go sit down and it goes off again. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, um, so pretty much nothing in real life to talk about. RuneScape related, though? Well, actually, no, I can go back. I guess I started getting into uh, Tekken 7. Oh, okay. That's the... Uh, Fighting game? Yeah. I always get Tekken and Street Fighter mixed up. Are they pretty similar? Mm, I mean, they're both fighting games, but they're like they're really different in terms of how they play. Do they both have, like, Hydukens? Kind of like there's one person from Street Fighter in Tekken that has Hydukens, I guess. Oh, the little crossover. Oh yeah, they have some crossovers. They have like Noctis from Final Fantasy in Tekken. Noctis. Oh, that's from the new Final Fantasy. Yeah, oh, that's a good game. Yeah. So pretty much, I'll sit down and play for an hour, and they get really frustrated because the game's super hard, and then go play RuneScape. Fuck yeah. Whatever happened to that one fighter game? It was like robots fighting. You used to play it all the time. Yeah, Rising Thunder. Um, yeah. It's actually funny because I like was like really into it when the, when the, I guess the game was in alpha or I don't fucking know. Early access probably. It was free though. I didn't pay for it. And then Riot Games bought them and shut them down. No, the League of Legends took them over. Yeah, this was like a long time ago. And I was like a pretty big contributor for like... At the time, he was considered one of the worst characters, and then I like was like going through my YouTube channel, just like putting a bunch of things unlisted because I just have a bunch of stupid videos that I think are funny, and it's like, oh yeah, I was just making some stupid edits, and then eventually I'm like, okay, I don't really want these to be on YouTube anymore, but I can't save them because my Sony, I had some issues with Sony Vegas, so like I lost all my fucking videos and shit, and all my footage that I had saved up, Aye. like last week, so that kind of sucks. Um, or two weeks ago. Anyways, so I was like putting a bunch of unlisted, and I was like, "Man, I really miss this game, and I kind of want to go play it." And so I googled it, and then the people that were developing it came out with like a community patch, where it's like it's an unsupported version, I guess. But there's only like fifty people that actually play it, so it's really hard to find games. So it's like a private, so, so like Mop- Mopar Escape for Rising Thunder. Yeah, pretty much. So, Riot, the people who run League of Legends, bought the game and just scrapped it. Yeah. You're allowed to do that? That seems fucked up. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. You own the game, right? Um, So, people suspect because Riot Games wanted to make a fighting game, so they were going to take the engine, or I guess like the basis of Rising Thunder, and so they bought it and scrapped it, and they, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Could you imagine if Blizzard, instead of some ch- random Chinese mining company owning Jagex, imagine Blizzard bought them over and they were just like, well, you know, RuneScape's a little bit of a competitor, but can't have that. Just shut that one down. Just, you know, delete the f- the RuneScape files. I mean, that'd kind of be the worst fucking business decision ever. I think the main thing is that Rising Thunder already just, this player base was never big. Fighting games are not really that popular. No, definitely, because you have like, there's a huge gap between a casual and a hardcore player. Yeah, like the game people play for years and are still bad, right? Yeah, like I'll play Mortal Kombat for like an hour. Like my girlfriend will play the shit out of that game and I'll face her the first day we get the game and then a week later she's learned all the combos and I'm like just button mashing and I'm like yeah, fuck this game. I'm not going to memorize all these stupid combos. Yeah. I mean, I just want to button mash. The, another reason why I bought Tekken, so I have a fight stick, just like, uh, you know, it's like an arena pad thingy, like like an arena, an arcade pad thingy, <laughs> you'd see it like an arcade. Like an arcade joystick. Yeah, so, yeah, I got one I of those. seeing that. 
And I bought that like what four four or five years ago. And um Street Fighter came out with some update a while ago that made it so my fight stick didn't work. So I have to like download two programs and hook it up between two different programs. One so my computer can read it as a keyboard, and then one to make it think it's like an Xbox control controller at the same time. It's fucking weird. So I don't really play Street Fighter right now. I was just like looking for a new fighting game to try and pick up. Anyways, I'd, I'd play that for like an hour, get frustrated because the game is stupid hard, and then go play RuneScape. <laughs> nice. What do you think is the most popular... Uh, this is... I, I think I, I think I already know the answer to this one, but what do you think is the most popular fighting game? Street Fighter Five or Dragon Ball Z Fighter? Dragon oh, that's Ball the new Fighter one. Z? Yeah. Where do you think Super Smash Brothers ranks? So... You didn't hear from me, but most people in the fighting game community don't consider Smash a fighting game. What? Why not? Because it's so different. I see. It's like, um, I don't know. It'd be like considering like a mobile game that you level up in, an R- like MMO, but it's like a cookie clicker game, but you level up. You know what I mean? Well, I know there's some like, I- I'll like frequent some subreddits that are just about MMO RPGs. And there are some people in it that will like argue that old school RuneScape isn't an MMO RPG. Yeah, it looks like Eve isn't or something, right? Because they're just so different. I mean, if you can include Smash, like all the Smash games, because there's people that still play the N64 one. There's people wow. that play the modded Wii version called Project M. There's people that play like Melee, and then there's people that play the new one. It means probably more popular, but I don't really know. True. I'm not, like, super big and, like, I'm not, like, really good at the games. I just, like, you know, pick them up, play them for a bit, learn some combos, trying to learn, like, the mechanics of the game and how it works, and then get mad because I can't pick it up easily, and then go do Vorkath. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that being said, um, I, I broke 500 kill count in Vorkath. Oh, wow. Kind of expected to do that a lot faster, but I'll grind it for, like, an hour or two pretty efficiently, get, like, you know, quick 8 mil, and then just, like, <laughs> not do it for a day or two. Like, I'm kind of yeah. using Vorkath as a means to do a bunch of bosses and shit that I don't get any loot from. Yay. Hey, at least you're not saying you're using it to go stake it. No. I, I haven't been staking since my 12th loss in a row, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I haven't that's, even... That's... Like, it's annoying, but I haven't even, like, wanted to go stake. Like, I lost all my cash stack at that one point, and I was like... Hey, that sucks. And then I, I got money, and I just don't really want to go staking, because it's like... I mean, chances are I'll win. Well, not really. It's a 50-50. But chances are I'll win. But I don't... Like, if I lose, it's just going to annoy me, and it'll make me want to, like, stake more. I don't know. It's a legit waste of time when you lose a stake. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. And if you win, you're like, fuck, that's really nice. But, you know, I was thinking, like... Let's just say, let's play hypotheticals. Let's say I like sell my SGS and my Warhammer and shit, or my Hunter Crossbow, right? And I get like a hundred mil, I stake it and I win it. I'm like, nice. So then I stake another hundred mil and I win it. So then I have 200 mil to my like, my bank. Yep. All that does is like, like the amount of items and shit I'm saving up for, they're really expensive, but like that's kind of it. Like I want to get the Ancestral set, the Arcane Shield, and 99 Prayer. And I'm probably going to get those before 99 prayer because they keep going up in price. Like, every day they go up a couple mil. Okay. It's probably like a bubble. It's probably going to burst at some point and just drop right back down. That's, yeah. what, I, that's what I'm pretty confident is going to happen to the Dragon Hunter crossbow. M- once Raids 2 comes out or something like that, I think there's going to be a huge decrease in the Dragon Hunter crossbow. Right now, it's like, what, 100 mil? It's over 100 mil as we speak. Keep in mind, I complained I spent, like, 53 mil on it. Just keep that in mind. I was like, man, it's definitely not worth 53 mil. It's definitely just, like, you know, being... I, I thought it was a bubble back then. Um, honestly, though, the second it starts crashing, I'm going to be one of those people that panic sell and then buy it that same day. Let's say it goes from, like, 106 mil down to, like, 90 mil in a day. I'm going to, like, sell it and then put in a buy in for, like, 85 mil. It's fo- following the same trend as, like, Bitcoin did, like, back in December. I think a lot of us people are using Vorkath to grind money for raids. Yep. And being able to get 2 mil an hour with a blowpipe as opposed to like 4 mil plus an hour. Um, it's pretty nuts. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. And plus with raids, since you can use it on Ulm. Yep. Right? Yeah, exactly. Budget twisted bow. 
<laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay, so I did a bunch of raids. I think I'm like at 150 kill count or maybe above that. I'm somewhere around 150 kill count for raids. I don't know where. Pretty dry though. Haven't really gotten anything yet. Um no uniques from that. I did like two I think 200 bandos kills this past week. Mhm. Which is annoying cuz I have to fucking tank the whole time. And uh, it's annoying because like I want to just use my max range setup and just insta kill it, but I tank. But I don't mind tanking. But it is annoying doing 200 kills and you like every eight or nine kills you might get one, or maybe every 15 kills you'll get you'll get one credit for one. If you're in a four man or something, you're never getting a kill just because like everyone's in max range and shit, right? Yeah, the odds are stacked against you. You gotta be like bring a crystal Halley and just be super lucky with the hits. Even though with a crystal Halley, you're missing. 70% of the time anyways. I mean, I mean, if you're tanking, you should bring an SGS. Yeah, yeah. And and Guthans and shit, but yeah, I know what you mean. And then I did a bunch of Sarah, a bunch of solo Sarah. So, okay, what happened? I was grinding Sarah, and I hadn't, okay, keep in mind, I hadn't done solo Sarah in well over, like, a year, I think. Like, I haven't soloed it in a, in a fucking long-ass time. And I go out and get the ecumenical keys. Mm-hmm. And I went and, like, did one trip. And I com- like I completely like I was praying the wrong thing. Like I completely just didn't remember. All I knew was just to run around in circles. Inventory <laughs> set up was shit. Everything was bad. I got like four kills and had to leave. I'm like, that sucks. I'm gonna make sure I know what to do. And I go and like look up the right gear and I go and fix all that setup. Go back and in- into the will to get ecumenical keys, and I spent an hour and ten minutes getting one key. That's pretty unlucky. So what I do is I kill three imps and I world hop. Okay. Just to make as fast as possible. And it's like a one, it's a one in 60 chance on an imp, I believe, to get a key. And I spent an hour and 10 minutes of like being efficient, like killing world hopping, killing world hopping over and over again. And um, I did it in like sessions. I did it for like 30 minutes. I had like a episode on Netflix going while I was doing it and it ended and I realized I was still getting keys. So I went and got off, like went and made some food and just went and did some other shit, came back and like put on a movie and I finally got it, checked the movie and I was 40 minutes into that. Damn, what movie? I don't even remember, dude. I don't even remember. <laughs> just blacked out for 40 minutes. I mean, like, when I play RS, I'll just go on Netflix and, like, eh, this might be a good movie, and I just put it on. Usually it's pretty bad, though, and I'll just tune it out as I play RuneScape. Yeah, fair enough. That's something I uh, I got a huge movie list to watch, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I always just spend my time browsing YouTube and finding some YouTube channel to go binge watch some of their shit and... Half the time, I'm like, hmm, this is pretty unsatisfying, and I don't know why I don't just default to Netflix, but yeah, that's a weird one. But anyways, backing it up, for any listeners out there who are like, Ecumenical Key? What in the fuck is that? It's a, uh, there's two God Wars dungeons. There's one up in Trollum, which is like your regular God Wars dungeon that has all the monsters in it. It also has all the bosses in it, but there's also a Wilderness God Wars dungeon that basically it doesn't have any of the bosses in it, but it has all of the other monsters. The only difference is when you're killing shit in there, you have a chance of receiving an, an ecumenical key. For all the monsters in the God Wars dungeon, in the wilderness, you have a slight chance of receiving an item called the ecumenical key. Default, like your account going in there without having any of the wilderness diaries done, it's a 1 in 60 chance of receiving one of those. And then for every one of them you get, it, the drop rate increases by 10, so your second one will be 1 out of 70, and your third will be 1 out of 80. Mm-hmm. And you can only have a maximum of three keys. Yeah. And these keys allow you to bypass the kill count at the regular God Wars dungeons when fighting the bosses. Going back to that, if you're killing bosses in the God Wars dungeon, you need to kill 40 of the respective minions. So, like, if you're killing bandos... If you want to kill the Bandos boss, you got to kill, I believe it's just like those goblins and ogres. Yeah. You kill 40 of them. Yeah, people just like run north the second they enter. And there's uh, four goblins and an ogre spawn. And it's super easy. Um, Typically, people generally like, I don't know about Arma. Um, I'm assuming Arma is one of them. But I think maybe Arma and uh, Sarah you want to use keys for if you're just grinding out the boss because it's a lot faster. Typically. It is a lot faster, although when I do, ar- well, this is a little bit different, because I only do Armadil, solo Armadil, when I have a Slayer task to kill yeah. Aviancies, in which case I kill the little minions, and you normally use two slots of food. It does take a little bit of time, but if you have, I believe it's your hard Fremenic Diaries done, 
you get your adamant you get adamant bars that drop from them in noted form. So yeah, when by the time you get into the Criera, which is the the armadillo boss, you'll have like like tw- at least twenty adamant bars, which is like it's not much, but it's Something. great because half the yeah. time you don't get anything from the armadillo boss, so it's nice yeah. to walk away with something yeah but yeah i did like maybe 50 or 60 solo sarah kills once i like figured it out i don't like prey flick like crazy i'm not like prey flicking all the minions and shit like people do because you can stay Mm -hmm. there for a long time if you can prey flick one tick flick like all the minions and shit properly you can stay there for pretty much ever like until you're like yeah um there's people that get like thousands of like a thousand kills or like a couple hundred kills in a trip um Anyways, I average like 10-ish, just because I'm lazy about it. Um, anyways, so after spending like an hour and 10 minutes getting ecumenical keys, hmm. I would go back and kind of just like, I really wanted to just stockpile a bunch of keys, but the issue is like, yeah, if you want to get, I think it's like whatever the limit is, like three at default, it's like, you know, the chances are like lower and lower, so it's kind of a waste of time unless you have nothing else to do and you just want to do it. Yeah, it's three. You can hold three keys with no diaries done. If you have medium or hard done, you can hold four or yeah. five keys, and the drop rate always stays at one out of sixty. Yeah, so I did. Um, I did my easy and mediums, and then I did my hard diaries. Like I was streaming, and I was like kind of bored on stream, so I went and did the hard diaries and like the bounty hunter world just for fun, mm-hmm. and um, got that done. And I only reason why I bring that up because I just decided to go out and solo PK deep wildy. Oh boy. It was actually a lot of fun. I like kept bumping into this team of like three or four people and they were like really bad. So the way bounty hunter worlds work is that regardless, there's a PJ effect. So if I'm attacking someone in like a singles and he stopped, he just sits there and spam meets or doesn't attack and lets his buddy jump on me. And as long as I'm hitting him, you know, I can't get PJ would off of him. And they did that because there were people that would, like, make, like, you know, 10 HP Debo rushers or DFS peers, like, just the 10 HP, like, defense peers. Mm-hmm. People would do all these cheesy things where they'd go stand at, like, Wilderness 5, and then someone would, like, okay, let's go attack this guy. So, let's say I have a target on Bob, and me and you are just rushing people. You would, like, Debo spec Bob, and the second you do that... Like, like literally, like, the next tick, I would do the same thing, and then they eat two Debo specs and just die. Mm-hmm. So they changed it to kind of prevent that. And also, you know, mid-fight, I've seen this happen quite a bit, where you're, like, attacking someone who's not your target, and then a guy who comes in, and he's like, this, like, you're actually my target, and he'll just go in and Gmail spec, finish you off, and walk away. <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyway, so they made it so you can't do that anymore, and I bring that up because... I was, like, when I go PK, I'm in, like, complete rags, right? I'm risking, like, 200 kegs. I'm wearing, like, Xerix and just trash gear. Yep. Snakeskin boots. Oh, yeah, the good stuff. So what I would do is I would take the Artie lever, and then I would run down to the entrance of the Lava Dragons where I'd find this team, and I would just, like, start barraging them and fucking with them, and I would, like, run all the way to singles. Like, I would run uh, southwest or southeast down to, like, near the Callisto safe spot area between Callisto and Venonatus area, because that's all singles. And I would go and bring them in there and try and fight them. And, like, they almost fucked me up. Like, the one guy, like, de-speared me in multi, and they just tried stacking me out. Just end up going in and having some fun, just trying to take on a team. And then eventually I end up bringing them, like, deep-ish into singles. And I end up killing one dude and then making the other guy teleport. And I just had a full inventory of loot, and I just fucking peaced out. Nice. It was super nice. And then that, like, got me into, like, PKing a decent amount this week. In the beginning, I was like, I was getting kills like crazy, and I was like making some decent money throughout the week, and then I just started fucking dying all the time because I'm in regs, and like you find people in like full mystics with an AGS. Yeah, okay. And it is like the second you go to robes, they're just gonna like run up and spec you, and if they don't kill you, they're gone. And it's like really hard to actually kill those guys because they just have way better gear, and some of them are a lot better than me. But fuck, so much fun, a lot, a lot of like, a lot of PKing. It is so satisfying to kill someone and see, like, that loot pile of gear. Even though that loot pile of gear might only be worth, like, a couple hundred K, which, like, you get to a point where that's really, that's, like, chump change. You know what I mean? It's really not that much, but it's just so satisfying to be able to loot 
to loot yeah, that I mean, body. It's, it's the great. the singles like PKers I'd bump into. The, you know those those fucks that just like what I would do is I'd go to um the lava maze and I'd just chill. Mm-hmm. And you would find a guy in like full Mystics log in, and if you kill him, it's like six hundred to one mil depending on like what what else they bring. Because you'll PK a Kraken tentacle. You can get lucky and get like a whip and shit too, right? And get a whip, maybe an AGS. That's super lucky. But the guys that I would see a lot, the guys I kept fighting, would be in like full Mystics with the Spirit Shield. And then, like, they'd have, a, like, a whip and an AGS or D-Claws. So, you know, you get the Kraken Tentacle, which is some nice money. True. Yep. Anyways, I didn't really get super lucky with that stuff, but it was a lot of fun. I don't know. I'm pretty much done <laughs> with God Wars Dungeons because I'm, like, at this point, I did the math. From, like, th- this week alone, I, I'm, I've i almost hit the drop table for all uniques. But before that, I had, like, maybe I had a couple hundred, like, kills maybe like 200 i don't really know how much because i tank a lot but then i'm also in like four man so it's kind of hard to know how many kills i've been around for but i'm well over the drop table for everything and I, all i've got is a bcp and solos which was like well over a year ago at this point i think uh might have been like the beginning of the podcast B- bcp banos chest plate oh oh shit sorry I, uh, fuck never mind i don't know where my brain is at the moment yeah so it's kind of annoying Knowing that I'm pretty dry, I'm like dry on the Tacits and on the the God Sword, and then I'm also dry at Sarah too. I'm over kill count for uh, ACB and the SGS, and I'm going dry on raids and like Vorkath. I'm not dry, I'm nowhere near dry on anything yet. I don't think. Um, maybe the Dragon Bone Necklace. I don't really know what the drop rate is. I think it's one in a thousand, so I guess not. I don't really know, but I just do that for yeah, money. It, it, I believe it is one in a thousand, and then for the the Dragonfire Ward, I believe it. I believe it's one called. in five thousand. Yeah, one. It's more rare than the pet, which is one in three thousand. So that's interesting. Um, let's just say I've been going so dry at all the bosses I do that I've gone through two tentacle whips before I've even gotten a unique. Aye. That's like to put it in perspective. Well, yeah, it's in, it's. Uh, hmm, I guess that's just the way she goes. Yeah, because um, just looking at the drop table for the Bandos boss. All the pieces, the the chest plate, tassets, and boots, are one out of three hundred and eighty four. Yeah. So you know, fair, fairly rare there. Um, and then you got the Sarah boss, where the armadillo crossbow is one out of five hundred and eight. Yeah. And the Sarah Doman hilt is the same thing. The yeah. Sarah Doman godsword, same thing. So yeah, it's a little like discouraging. The main thing is my main issue is like if you're tanking. At like let's say Bandos, you're you're gonna lose money nine times out of ten if you're splitting evenly with a group of people because you have to bring a bunch of brews and like we have to bring more expensive supplies. Sure. So it kind of sucks. There's been times where like I'll do like a couple hour trip with some boys and then I like look I'm like oh fuck I actually lost money. I got 200k. I got like 150k out of that whole trip and fuck that sucks. So like I don't know. I'm just I I'm just like. So what happens is I kind of have to go to Vorkath to offset the money I'm losing. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's the funny thing. They're two, like, polar opposites of how the bosses, like, GP per hour works for them. Back in the day, the standard for bossing was you don't make any money until you hit that unique drop table. Yeah. It's only till recently where it's like, well, people want to have consistent money when they're bossing regardless, which yeah. is kind of like... I don't know, like, Cerberus is kind of cool because it's a little bit of a throwback to those days. Yeah, like, you make a little bit of money, and then you make a bunch of money. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the main thing is, um, I did the math, and if I was doing it with, like, a four-man, and I got Tacit Drop, my splits, like, the amount of time I put in, like, I, you're making, like, not even, like, less than 500k an hour. You know what I mean? Like, so if I finally hit a drop with the group, it's like, it's still really bad money for me. Not even taking into consideration the two whips I've gone through. That Yeah, that's the thing. You're going there with the hopes of being lucky. Yeah. Which, is, it's like that with most bosses, but more especially with those bosses where you're not getting any loot until you hit that drop table. Like, nobody wants to go and kill 384 Bandos bosses before you get a drop. You're hoping that you're going to get it within your first 50. You're hoping that you just get lucky. Yeah, I mean, on the plus side, I bought my whips at its, like, lower points for, like, 2.3 mil. What, 2.4 now? 
No, they're under. They they should be under two point four still. Um, they might might have gone back up. I don't really know. Yeah, they're at two point three. Yeah, you mentioned the Kraken tentacle that getting it. You know, it's a fair chunk of change. Do you know? Have any idea how much money it is right now? Like a mil. That's fucked up. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, dude. They used to be one hundred k. Yeah, I had a couple, and I just sold them for like three hundred k at one point. It's because they made they change it so you can use ten tentacles on a trident staff and hold ten thousand charges or something or fifteen thousand charges. Hmm. So that's 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 the reason. Yeah, I just I can't believe it would go up that much in price. Yeah. Surprising. What else did I do this week? I don't I don't really know. I pretty much got excited for the updates, but what'd you do this week? Ooh, my week. So let's see. What did I do in real life? Probably nothing. I applied for college. Nice. So that's exciting. I kind of picked two courses. The first one was like social work, and I was like, that's kind of like in the back of my head, like the job I have now, it pays well, but it's very unfulfilling. Like you just go to the end of the day, you don't I don't care what I do and that during that 10 hours that I'm there. It's just it's hard to care. So yep. that I've been, I'm feeling a little drained in that department. So I decided, you know, it'd be nice to like help people and stuff like that. That's something you won't make as much money probably, but you probably go home feeling good unless you're doing some real depressing shit. But still, you can feel like you're making a change in this world, which is that'd be kind of nice, you know what I mean? So I applied for that. And then there was a wait list, and it's like, oh, it's a good chance you might not get in, might have to wait another year. And I'm like, started, you know, started getting the sweaty palms. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do the job for another year. At least I don't want to. I could do it, but I don't know if I want to. I'd like to just get into school and start moving along with my life. So I applied for a second course, which, you know, it's, a, it's a radio broadcasting. That, that'd be kind of exciting, eh? Yeah, it'd be pretty neat. Maybe we can finally up the quality of this podcast. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Exactly. <laughs> like, I started looking into it because, like, I've always had an interest in radio just growing up as a kid. I remember having, like, this karaoke machine and me and friends would do these, like, mock radio shows, which were really lame. I wish I, I, wish I could find the tape cassettes, but they're long gone. Oh, yeah. I, I remember you guys recording that shit. I always had a lot of fun doing that. So it's kind of been in the back of my head like that would be really cool to do but also like i look at radio and i'm like it's kind of it's not that it's a dead me- media i don't know it's a dead source of media i suppose but it's like it's evolving i should say and it's evolving into like basically podcasting right yeah that's where a lot of it's changing so it's just like it's a weird the reason i wasn't like okay i'm gonna go sign up for a radio right now and let's get into this is because like i don't really know how well that would go for pursuing a career in it. And yeah, I I don't know. It it seems like, uh, like you're just diving into an ocean and then you got to just search where to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I was thinking I have a lot, you know, I I really enjoy doing this podcast. It's pretty cool. All day at work, I'm listening to other podcasts and it's just, it's kind of cool. I, and I said like, fuck it. Let's, let's see where this could go. Let's, uh, let's sign up for it. And if I get accepted, who knows, maybe, uh, Maybe you'll be listening to the Wilderness Podcast on Sirius XM. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. You're listening to <laughs> the Wilderness, Wilderness, Wilderness Podcast. You know, like all that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Deacon and Dills every morning <laughs> all throughout the week. And it'd just be us being like, we can barely do this once a week, let alone, let alone five. How are we going to follow that shit up? God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? How the yeah. fuck are we supposed to do this for five days a week? We're talking about strength. This is how you train. Oh, yeah, it's um, but it'd be cool to learn all about you know the way some of the audio equipment works because it's really it's kind of hard to like. I starting this podcast, we we both went into it blind. I remember picking up these USB. Um, fuck, you go back and listen to our first episode. I was on like just a normal gaming headset, and it was ugh, it's it's rough. It's a rough one, and even just editing it, it was just so bad. But, you know, over time, I started learning a little bit more about microphones and different equipment you would need. And now, you know, I'm sitting here with a whole little setup with a little mixer and an audio interface and a better microphone. And I've gotten a lot better at editing it through the uh, some of the programs. But anyways, it'd be cool to learn, like, all the ins and outs from, like, a professional instead of having to watch YouTube videos. And Yeah. I was some, like, 14-year-old kid that knows everything. You're like, fuck, how... Why don't I know this shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what What is he learning in school that I'm not? Yeah. God damn. So, yeah, that's what I kind of did this. Oh, that, that's all that it's exciting this week. So we're looking forward to that. We'll have to give some updates in the future. But besides that, 
just gaming some RuneScape. I think last week I was still working on my goal of getting 82 fishing to get this master clue scroll done. I think I was working on that for like two weeks, maybe three weeks. Yeah. It's kind of nice to take a little break. Like you're kind of stepping back from actually playing RuneScape and you're just AFKing it while you're doing other shit on the side. For the most part, I was playing um, League of Legends or Stardew Valley and games like that. But I started getting, I started getting burnt out from League, which is happens pretty fast because that game is just a well, geez, a toxic cesspool. Yeah, the one thing I always say about like League and Dota is that the games aren't fun; they're just addictive. Some like when they're fun, they're like really fun. Like you're just they're great games. But when you have a bad game. You're literally stuck and playing like 45 minutes of like, I'm not even having fun. I'm feel I'm, pl- I'm spending 45 minutes feeling bad about myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially when you come back for after work and you're exhausted and you go ahead and try to play it and you're playing like shit. And then your whole team's like, what the fuck, dude? You fucking sack. Bop, 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 bop. And you're the like, worst is like, like league brings the worst out of people and I, i've had it where like i'll play with a group of friends and like i know like i'm well aware of it so i'm always just making jokes and just like trying to make sure no one gets mad yep but then there's always like one person that was like can you fucking take this serious man I'm like what take a yeah i play runescape fucking all the time but i can't even take the game serious you know what i mean well you it's a it's a it's a video game you don't want like you want to take it serious to an extent but you want to be having fun yeah, like I'm not, tr- I'm not like feeding and well, I guess some games you'll feed just it's the way it goes, but I'm not like trolling. I'm just like, you know, making jokes. And there's that one guy who's having a bad game and he fucking snaps. And then everyone, you just sit there in silence for like 40 minutes with your friends on Discord playing mm-hmm. League. And you're like, Ugh, can we just play a good game. Can we just play like something that's actually fun. <laughs> and there's always Fuck. that one friend who, is like that but he gets super toxic where he's like why don't you just fucking gank my lane once in a while and then the next thing what you know a you're, shitty gank yeah, yeah. you have two friends who are like fighting and you're like the game ends and they both just jump off and like that guy's a fucking idiot and, like fuck that dude and you're, like, they were playing that fucking idiot again oh you're just, you're just sitting there you're like so are we still doing lunch tomorrow <laughs> like this is this is gonna be a little bit awkward yeah so that's the problem it it's a uh, it's a rough one yeah. So anyways, got burnt out of that one after a couple of weeks. Still jump on every now and then, but not too much. And I ended up tapping out from my fishing grind at level 81 fishing. So I got really close, but I didn't get to 82. I got to 81. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to boost, catch my angler fish, continue on with this clue scroll, and, and hopefully get lucky. And maybe I'll be, uh, be fucking rolling in that dough. Yeah. Spoiler alert, didn't get shit. Nice. Yeah, Master Clues, good good use of your, you know, good use of your time. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I always do mine. See, the the joke is, if you're a new listener, is that I, I have, I've had every single clue, like, easy to master in my bank since Master Clues came out well over a year. <laughs> I, I just don't do my clues. I hate them. Yeah, so, Deegan, you're sitting at seven easy clues, five yeah. medium, 12 hard, and one elite. Yeah. Zero masters done. Yeah. So you have a total of 25 completed clue scrolls. I'm actually amazed I have one elite done because I did those while I was like a noob hoping to get that random item that will boost my account like value, my GP. And I just didn't. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't, it's a waste of time now. Never doing them again. So you got those low ranked clue scrolls. Then you got me on the other hand, the clue scroll master. 15 easies done, 27 mediums, 151 hards, 21 elites, 12 masters. With a total of 226. So I've got 200 more than you almost. Oh, yeah. A little bit more. It's the way she goes. <laughs> Nothing good from them. Exactly. In fact, you've probably lost money having to buy some of the the, the, the levels. Yeah. Most. Yep. Yep. The reason I like to do clue scrolls, especially master clue scrolls, is there's a lot of skills that I wouldn't normally level, like fishing, for instance. If I'm AFKing, I'll be woodcutting. So it was sitting at like 72 for the longest time. I get a massive clue scroll. It gives me an excuse to have to get 81 or 82, but I got 81 fishing. Same thing with mining. I would never have leveled it up, but boom, now I got 82 because of a master clue scroll. Yeah. So that's my excuse for doing it. So going from 72 fishing to 81 fishing, basically only fishing monkfish, I got 10,000 monkfish. Not bad. It's not too bad. It's a little over three mil. 
I mean, it's bad experience per hour, but altogether, yeah, it's a fair chunk of change. And yeah. I also said I also was talking about how I did my fishing trawler, how to get the full outfit. I ended up getting three hundred sharks from that. Nice. So what was your what was your total loot for all the fish? Yeah, eight uh ten thousand monkfish, three hundred sharks, seventy two swordfish. So it's like you said, it was over three mil. Yeah, just over three mil, maybe uh-huh. going closer to four mil with the sharks included. So you're telling me I could spend a couple weeks fishing monkfish or do one hour of workath? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, that's the way she goes. Yeah, welcome to uh, old school RuneScape in 2018. Yeah, good stuff. So yeah, I went and caught my angler fish, which all which also meant I had to get a hundred percent in Piscalarius, Piscatorius, Piscalarius. Yeah, Piscalarius, Piscalarius. Yeah, Piscatorius is the monk fishing place. Okay, so I had to get a hundred percent favor in Piscalarius. So I went and did that. I I went and did that quest. Pretty easy quest. You can get it done in like ten minutes, and you get like what a free ten percent. Yeah, I don't know. I just some uh, Zia quests I haven't done. Those are the only ones I haven't done. If you need to grind the favor, check to see if there's a quest within the the house because they've added a bunch of new quests on Zia, like maybe four or five. I don't know, maybe a little bit less. But each one of them will actually make it easier to grind out favor. One of them called the Client of Kurend, if I'm not mistaken, doubles all favor gained when doing activities on Zaya. Yeah. So that that's huge. And you can add 20% favor to anything. Oh, true. Yes, yeah, so that's it's big. So that's a really important one. And plus you get another 10% with each of the quests you do. And you get teleports to teleport around because it's a huge continent. But going back to Piscalarius, I really did not enjoy that grind for getting that favor. Really? It is brutal. It's like one of the fastest. It takes like an hour. It felt like it took like 10 hours. It took like 10 years off my life, it felt like. So you repaired the crane to what, like 20%? I repaired it to, I think it's 30, where you can move on to the next thing. Yeah, okay. Which is where you got to spam click these barrels, fill up your inventory with fish, deliver it to this guy, and you're under a time limit because the fish start disappearing once it hits that timer. Yeah, they start rotting. Yeah, they start rotting and disappearing from your bag. So you hand it in, then you get favor for how many you hand in. You do that to like, I'm just guessing because I can't remember, but it's like 50%, let's just say, maybe less, maybe more. I don't have the numbers up on me right now. But when you've done that, you go and basically dig up worms and put them in buckets and then turn them in for favor. Yeah. You do that all the way to 100, which was, it's not fun at all. So what I did is I did the cranes all the way up until the worms because the cranes and the fish. So there's one you repair qu- cranes, like the fishing cranes, and then you then there's like the fish that you just explained, and then like the the grubs. You can just do the cranes up until the grubs, and it's the same yeah. favor as the the fish. Like you get the same rates. I don't know if you were do- when you were doing it if you're doing it in a- with a group of people. No, just solo. What I would do is I would repair a crane, and if there was none next to that general store that like to repair, I would just world hop. Yeah, if you're doing it with a couple other people, it's faster because you all can work on the same crane. I mean, I I had it done in like an hour. I thought it was not that bad. It was, it's super fast. And then you have to go back to the bank to load up on planks and nails. It's just I, I don't what? know. I just found no, it annoying. No, dude, dude, no, 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 no. You, you, you get noted planks and you sell them to the general store and then you buy them back. Oh, dude, that's fucking sm- damn. Why didn't you tell me this shit? I don't know. You're doing Piscarillus. What the hell? You ran to a bank in RuneScape? Nah, dude. Well, shit. Yeah, you sell the noted. You, I would sell like twenty five and then buy them back. It was scary because you sell 50, and you're like, fuck, I only brought enough. <laughs> like, I'm out of planks. Oh, fuck, they're going to start disappearing. Well, goddamn, that's some 200 IQ right there. Yeah, you sell the note of planks, take them out, you you build, and you world hop. Make sure you, you don't leave any left in the GE, though. Or not the GE, the general store. Yeah, true. Shit, you're good at RuneScape, eh? Oh, yeah, dude. Master. Blew my mind right there. But anyways, that's long in the past. But one thing I noticed when I got 100% in the Piscalarius house is that there's nothing on that house. It's just angler fish. That's it. You unlock it for anglers. That's it, though. Everything else has, like, multiple things you can do. 
You know, like Hosidius, you got the woodcutting guild, you got teeth farming, you got grapes, grape farming. Yeah, you have the kitchen. The kitchen. Like the, like the, the, there's a stove with the Hosidius house, if you don't know, that reduces your chance to burn. So mm. what people do is you, and it stacks with your cooking gauntlets. So you get, you know, you cook at the kitchen with the gauntlets. And I did that with like sharks and stuff. So I wouldn't burn them. And that's how I got 99 cooking. Yep. Bank right by there too. Yep. Uh, you can also do some, like some sort of thieving. We can thieve like fruit or something like that. Fruit stalls. Some food stall. Yeah. Fruit or food stalls. I don't know. But Arceus, you have a new spell book. You have the Ensold ha- Heads, where you can summon these monsters to gain prayer experience. You have a new sort, new way of rune crafting, blood runes, a different method, which is what I've heard. It's not too bad. Pretty AFKable. Pretty AFKable. Shazian. You have Lizardmen Shamans. Is that it? I think so. Yeah. But through that, Dragon Warhammers, the Talismans, uh, Zarek and the like, the leathers or whatever to make the Zarek tops and bottoms. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, okay, so Shazian's another one where it only unlocks the shamans, but as you just mentioned, the shamans are like a byproduct. You get all these other things with them. Yeah. And then you have Lovaken, which gives you blast mining, and you have like the mine network, which brings you around Zaya. So I guess that's another one that, I guess it's just Hasidius and Arceus that really have a fair bit of things you can do. Yeah. But as we mentioned in the past, we are still on phase two of a three-phase project that Zaya is, which gives them opportunities in the future to add some more things into these otherwise boring and taskless houses, I suppose. I shouldn't say taskless, but like, I don't know the word I'm looking for here. Anyways, uh, moving on. Yeah, that uh, clue scroll gave me nothing, and I mentioned last week how I had, I think it's I had two or three clue scrolls saved up. I had like two and a half maybe. So I wor- started working on my other one, got hit with another skill that I had to level up. This time it is Herblore. So I have to go from 77 Herblore to 87, I believe, to make Venom potions, anti-Venom potions. Noise. So how are you on that grind? It's just sitting in my bank. It's a kind of expensive grind, and I kind of blew some money on some equipment so i don't have too much money right now i ended up buying a armadillo crossbow and the anguish necklace necklace of anguish the 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 ranging necklace i can't remember what it's called necklace of anguish is that what it's called yeah yeah okay so i ended up buying that because i had an an aviancy's task as i mentioned earlier so i bought some ranged equipment because had some money. Usually I have a bunch of money sitting in my bank that I kind of hold. I don't have anything I really need. I need. I have a bunch that I need, but I don't need this instance. I wait till I get like a Slayer task or something that's like, oh, you got to kill, you know, some Aviancies. I'm like, oh, that's a ranging. That's a monster you have to range. Let me buy some ranging equipment. And then I go and do that. And then I just leave them in my bank and let it kind of fill out that way. So I bought, yeah, the Armadillo crossbow and yeah, the uh, Anguish necklace. So that's not bad, but... In doing so, I have no more money anymore, and I can't can't train Herblore, which is an expensive one. Yeah, it's uh pretty expensive. What um I suggest to everyone who like wants to level up Herblore is just to put in buy into the unfinished potions at like a lower rate. Like if you have an alt or something, just like fill up your your fucking GE buys with like low with low buys. And like I knew a guy who made money getting his Herblore up because he just put the uh, prices for so low. And I don't know if it's, like, people getting hacked or, like, if someone just saves up a bunch of unfinished potions and they need money now so they sell them all. Or if they're, like, stake or, like rage staking. But for some reason, people will just, like, opt in to put them at a really low price to insta-sell them. And if you're lucky, you can just get free herbal or experience. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, it, would t- it would take a while, right? You kind of need, like, an alt to just do that. Or the waste of slot or two. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I never really... I should do that. That's a smart idea. I'm surprised that it's unfinished and not just random herbs because there's a lot of low levels. And when I was a low level, this is exactly what I did. I would farm herbs and sell them because when you're a low level and you get a Ranar weed, which is what, like 8K, something like that. That's a fair chunk of change for like a low level that you can you can be grinding chaos druids or something. Yeah, you just. I mean, I it. sell all my herbs I get. I don't. I don't ever see, especially with the potions not passing. 
I don't mm. really see a point getting over 90 Herblor, so I just sell everything I get, minus Guam's. I'm the opposite. I take the Iron Man approach, and I save up all my herbs, turn them into potions whenever I'm running low on a certain potion. I'm like, oh, I don't have any more prayer potions, but I notice I have like 12 Renner weeds. I'm going to turn them all into prayer potions as well as all my herbs into whatever potion they can make. And I just kind of keep them, and it's kind of, it's kind of, fa- I find it satisfying. Yeah. So that's that's pretty good. But besides that, I'm kind of just doing some Slayer. Yeah, just some Slayer in the meantime. Not bad. There's nothing interesting there. No, it's it's all right. I'm at 95 Slayer and 92 Defense. Nice. That's the progress there. It's pretty good. Soon enough, I will have those at 99. Do you want to uh, move on to the news? Let's, yeah, let's move it on to the news. i got nothing else going on this week, so let's do it. For this week, if you had a, or have, I guess, a quest cape, you might have noticed you can't use it because they added a new quest. Hey. Nice. This one's called Tale of the Righteous, and it is the Shazian quest on Zia. Hey, would you look at that? Yeah. It's a novice level quest, and yeah, just focus on the Shazian house. So yeah, you'll need 16 strength, 10 mining, and 20% Shazian favor to start this, and to have Client of Karen done. Cool. And once you complete it, you get a quest point, 8k, 10% Shazian favor, and a new teleport. Not bad. It seems like each one of these quests give you a new sort of teleport. I forget what quest it is, but they give you this book, and you can kind of put these things into the book, and they give you more teleports. Cause, yeah. Yeah, Zaya is kind of lacking some of the teleports there. Yeah. But we can't just skip over the little lore they're giving us here. Oh, yeah. Hit us with the lore. All right, if you don't mind. Over a thousand years ago, King Shazian the Seventh ordered an expedition to Mount Quidimortum. The expedition never returned, and it was assumed that all members perished in the field. However, a recent discovery suggests that this may not have been the case. Philias Remor is the descendant of the expedition leader, and he is desperate to discover the truth. Join him and delve into the conspiracy a thousand years ago in the making in Tale of the Righteous. Oh, yeah. I've yet to do this quest. I'm probably, after this podcast, going to either, one, do an hour of Vorkath, or two, just do the quest and get my quest cape back. Yeah, you're lacking on that one. I remember you got that way back. Yeah. I just have a couple quests, a couple of the Zia quests to do. They're pretty easy, and unfortunately, whenever I'm doing these quests, I'm skipping over them with the space bar taped down, but they seem to have some decent writing involved. Yeah. Yeah, so so I've been told. Um, I'm not going to find out for myself, though, because that takes time. Anyways, yeah. that being said, with all these quests coming out, they are doing a Karen favor rebalance. Hmm. So, completion of the client Karen no longer gives double favor as a reward. Whoa, what? It is now given to all players by default. Um, in addition, they've made the following changes. The Pisk earliest, the, the favor for the crane repair is from 4 to 5. The uh, increased favor for break-ins is 16 to 20. And the chance of gaining favor while delivering fifth fish is from a 1 in 8 to a 1 in 5. Increasing the average favor per action from 1.25 to 2. Or 0. 0.2, all sorry. Right. Fuck it, let's it 0.125 and 0. 0.2. This is some straight bullshit. Um, well, if you have Client of Karend done, you won't notice this. I guess now the only reason of doing cl- Client of Karend is so that you can do these other quests that give you the... Extra yeah, ten percent or so, but uh, I don't know about that one. You know, uh, so there's decreased favor for handing in library books. It's from, went from thirty to twenty five. The manuscripts is six. This is Arceus House. Um, the manuscripts is sixty to fifty, but you get an increased favor when you use the necromancy spells. You get two. To, it's now from two to five, and dense block is just one per block. It used to be point five or one per two blocks. Mm. Hasidius increased favor for feeding soldiers in the mess hall from six to eight, and planting grapes is four to eight. Right on. So Shazian they decreased the favor for healing soldiers from two to one, killing lizard men two to one, decreased favor from killing gangsters thirty to twenty, increased the multiplier for killing a gang boss uh, from times three to times five. Increased favor for fighting the one tier soldier is two to four. The second tier is four to six. Third is six to eight. Fourth is eight to ten. In Lovakenge, they lower the chance of gaining favor when getting mine from sulfur from one out of two to one out of three. 
and they changed the favor from making dynamite to a guaranteed one. Um, previously only gave favor sometimes, so they made it more consistent. They decreased the favor for unlocking a new Minecraft route or minecart route from <laughs> yes, 80 to 50. Minecraft. Oh, yeah. Um, they increased favor for handing in tier one armors from 10 to 15. Tier two is 20 to 30. Tier three is 30 to 45. And tier four is 4 to 60 or 40 to 60. Tier five is 50 to 75. Cool. Interesting. Um, little side note, we always pronounce it Lovakenj. I think it's pronounced Lovakane. Well, I like Lovakenj. Anyways. Yeah, it's uh, it's up for interpretation at this point. But seeing this little little update here, it it we've talked about the way that they do their nerfs and buffs and that they should do them in little incre- increments. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here. I know it's not super big like it's just it's for the house favor not a big deal but these little tweaks some of them you're like that's really a small one but it looks like they've actually delved into the numbers you know what i mean yeah none of that really affects me because i have them all done that's what i want to see throughout the game when it comes to like balancing items and stuff like that you know what i mean like these small little tweaks here and there where it's like you might not really notice it but it's something they could you know it, it makes it easier to get it to the to the spot where they want it Ho- hopefully it's a proper balance but yeah they did the uh, world rotation changes so the standard pvp world is uh world 325 in the uk the high risk is 337 in the u.s the free to play pvp world is 417 in the u.s they're gonna they intend to move it to europe as detailed in the last announcement but they can't <laughs> not yet nope. Um, okay. Bounty Hunter World is 319, and that will be in the U.S. Cool. Further quality of life, they've reduced the um, Kudo requirement for Volcanic Mine to 150. Cool. So that's pretty nice. Maybe I'll actually try it out one day. Yeah, same. The Fishing Cape and the Max Cape have a teleport to the gro- or Otto's Grotto, and that's added to them while it's in the inventory worn, and on the POH Cape Hanger. So now there's cool. two teleports that you can use like while it's worn nice the scroll to zoom on desktop and the pinch to zoom on mobile those features are now enabled by default okay and it's saved on the player rather than the client cache so if you're going to the public library you don't got to worry about changing it every time now yeah but you still have to worry about those kids pinning you down when they drop trade all your stuff uh yeah that's the rough one but that's i don't think we're going to see a quality of life for that one yeah and let's have like fingerprinting fingerprinting or like maybe you have to answer some some question maybe it, you know what they could do when you go to drop an item a picture will pop up it'll be like a vhs tape and it'll be like what is this used for so then kids will be like i don't know that's probably a use that's a brick used to build houses or you know, i don't know maybe it shows them like a game boy color and it's like what is this and they can say like oh that looks like probably what ipads used to be yeah the first ipad but yeah, um, so if you've disabled the setting, uh, you'll need to toggle it off again, pretty much. And they extended the iOS beta. Oh, what? Come on. Um, it'll definitely end next week. Some of you, so I'm assuming this is why they have done it, but there's something that Apple products offer called Test Flight. So it's a way for developers to test applications. I don't really know. But in addition to providing you with the means of downloading old school RuneScape, it allows us to distribute updates. We've only seen a few hundred players update the latest version of the application, which was released on Monday. So if you are part of the beta, make sure you update your application. And yeah, I'm I'm assuming it's because they're getting really good feedback in terms of like what to improve and stuff. I'm not really too sure. Android users really dropped the ball on that one. Oh, yeah. We just silently enjoyed the beta. Yeah. I mean, there was also like over double the amount of um, iOS testers. Yeah. In other news, the warning on entering the corp instance has been rewit- rewritten. Whoa. Couldn't say that. <laughs> Words. They're hard. Yeah. Make it clear so um, you can be removed from the instance if removed from the clan chat. Or I guess the friends chat. The multiple people chat. Yep. Dead Man Summer Season is over. Ooh. Um, yeah, players will no longer be left on a block tile when entering the wheat field of, or north of Artie, which is kind of nice. Is it? I don't know. Who, who, who picks wheat? That's my question. (laughs) 
watch it be some crazy ass uh money making method yeah um the fall or the, following the improvements made to the route finding around a tree the fruit and hardwood farming patches the route finding around all large patches have been updated in the same way consistency yeah that's it for the updates but there are some polls that we should talk about because i am really excited for this cool uh before we jump into that so little update pot of flour is 129 gp so damn that's where that money's coming from damn 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 all right, so what's what's Poland? Chambers of Zarek. Ooh, challenge mode. We're getting a raids th- raids three. Yeah, but they're gonna they want to add a challenge mode to Chamber of Zarek's. Cool. Um, so challenge mode. So with the upcoming release of the Theatra, the Theater of Blood, <laughs> the linear raid challenge where all rooms are generated in the same order each time. Yada yada yada. We know how all this works. They want to emphasize the need for teamwork and and to push teams to earn the fastest raids completion, and they want to implement a similar experience for Zarek, for Chambers of Zarek. So before they go into detail, they highlight, you know, as part of the the PVM blog, whatever, they announce that this is still, like, where they want to, like, dedicate a poll to Chambers of Zarek's with balancing and tweaks. They're going to do this later on, which is stupid, but uh, whatever. Um, I mean, they should kind of they should kind of balance it before they add an update to it. Yeah, but I think they're following suit with those re- those new uniques for Rev Caves. Yeah. It's supposed to come out a fucking, like, um, two months ago. They were spo- yeah. Like, the beginning of March, it was when they were going to start looking into it, but whatever. The one thing I want, I want them to fucking take off the throwing axes, the sword, and the harpoon off the fucking raids table. Oh, you're just mad because RNG's finally kicking back from all that early on gains. Well, I think if you spend 30 hours doing something, you shouldn't either get between 70 mil or 200k do you think they should take out the drop tables and give you tokens and depending on how many points you gained no you can exchange those tokens for the uniques from no the people store? would find a way to just grind tebos it kind of crashed the tebow price that's how dungeoneering worked though yeah it's fucked i don't like dungeoneering <laughs> I, ne- I never liked it get that out of here i actually really enjoyed it but it, it was a way to it was a way to prevent people from getting stuck in these ruts where they're not gaining anything and they're just being super unlucky. Yeah. It allowed them to actually be able to buy something later on. And I mean, I do think, um, like, I'm fine with, like, the augury and shit. I'm not saying because it's a low value it should be taken off. Like, because augury's 12 mil, and, like, you know, you spend 30 hours, you get augury. Okay, that's bad RNG. You know, something's got, there's a one bill drop on the table. But... Yeah. There's three items that are pretty fucking trashed. I guess four if you include Augury. But um that's whatever. But there's three items that are really bad to get. It's like so what? And they're five percent too, right? So you're not as likely to get it. Like imagine spending thirty hours to get twenty or two hundred K. Yeah, it's like when you're killing Cerberus and you finally get a crystal drop. And it's Pagasian. Yeah, Pagasians, which is like twenty K. And it's on the same drop rate as a 20 mil drop. Yeah. But the main thing is like, pull your fucking brains out. Like throwing axes, like they knew they were going to be worth fucking nothing. They knew it. They knew it was, it was kind of a junk item to put on there, but they could have easily put that on another table. Like same, like they could have put all those items on different tables. Yeah. But they put them on Xerix and they knew that they were bad, but. It's like, it's an item that won't, that probably won't drop too much lower in price because PKers like to use them. And they are still good for stuff like that. Only Void Rangers will sometimes use them. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's such a niche item, which is fine. I don't mind that being a thing. But it is kind of annoying that you have a chance to get 200k if you dedicate a lot of time into something. What would you think of the idea if there's a few items that are currently on the raid's drop table? The Chambers of Zarek, Dragon Throwing Axes is one of them. What's another item that's not worth much that you don't want that you don't want to get? Long sword, or the not, not the long sword, just the sword. Sorry, the dragon sword. Yeah, the dragon sword. So there's two of them. The harpoon, Ma- and that's it. The well, harpoon. the harpoon, I'd even be okay with them keeping it, but mainly those two items. What would you say if those items were now on a like a general raids drop table? So when you're doing theater of blood, those items are also on that drop table. And it's sort of like how in RuneScape now, there's that rare drop table that tons of monsters throughout the game have, and you have the chance of getting a dragon medium helmet or a dragon spear, something like that. But it's 
it's kind of like a general drop table. That, that would be kind of cool. I would prefer that. Maybe they could add a few more items as well onto that drop table with each raid that comes out in the future, but this drop table is on every raid drop table. Yeah, like a general? Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. I would like that as an idea. Anyways, enough about me complaining that some of the drop table stuff is really weird. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this a bit more. So, the cha- what is challenge modes? So, it's pretty much an answer to what is bad about chambers of Zarek. so right now like every time you enter the the raid like the rooms are generally or are randomly generated to like a, a certain extent so you'll have a there's set patterns but you're kind of get placed it'd be like wheel of fortune you spin the wheel and then you like stop and then you go like clockwise or counterclockwise from that point point. and then the skilling rooms are kind of randomized gotcha so that being said, if you're doing raids, you sit there and spam scout a specific raid, and then you jump in and do it. Yeah, a scout is when you send either someone else or yourself. You go into these raids to see what the first room is, and then from that you can know what your other rooms will be. You try to find a... Yeah, you find two rooms, and then you can kind of determine where you are within that wheel, I guess. That and So that is the, the biggest factor on how fast your raids are. Yeah, you don't really have control how fast you can do raids. It's kind of up to RNG to get the right rooms. They want to have a new variant called Challenge Mode. So within the party interface of Xerix, raid leaders will be able to accept or like select a Challenge Mode when forming a raid. And once this has been selected, any raid started by the leader will have a set room order, which will always be the same for all Challenge Mode raids. And once you're inside, you'll find that all of its inhabitants will have become stronger than their standard counterpart. And, you know, that's where the challenge is. It'll push the limits of your PVM skills and strategies to encourage those uh, of you looking to battle for the fastest completion times. They like to add an in-game leaderboard uh, that records your results for everyone to see during that week. And each week it'll reset. In addition to completion time and display name, the top five players or the raid leader, you know, from the world's opened on. It'll just kind of show you the best teams, I guess. Or solo players, possibly. Outside of the game, um, they'll be dedicating a a page that will contain the names of the player or the raid leader of the fastest completion time for that week across all worlds. This will not be refreshed live, but they're going to update it weekly. And they'll have it tracked as solos, duos, trios, four-man, five, all the way up to ten. And then it'll be 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 50 plus. Pretty much, they cool. just have, you know, you could have the fastest solo guy get recognition and the fastest 10-man get recognition. Yeah, I like this. It kind of, it'll bring it to um to kind of like a race for some of the guilds, like guilds, for some of the clans in the game. Yeah. Sorry, when you mentioned this, the first thing I think of is World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. They have a hard mode for their, their raids as well, but you have these, like, in each server, you have the top guilds, and they're, like, always going for the first uh, world complete, right, of that thing yeah so it kind of brings it reminds me of this sorry this reminds me of that where you're gonna have like the top clans always competing for the top slots now the only thing i'm a little iffy on is week by week high scores i don't know i I feel like maybe that's that's too short of a period What, what do you think that compared to like a month well they're gonna be doing balancings and stuff like that so i don't know if they want like anyone to kind of like win solo because they found some weird exploit within the challenge mode i'm not really too sure doing month by month like i don't know i think it just makes it for more of a competition type thing where like imagine if someone cranked an amazing score right off the bat and you're like "Ah, i don't really want to compete not for fast time at least but i feel like that's what would happen maybe with the week by week because like some people who like i don't really have time you know what i mean but if you have it for a full month you could look at it and well be the like, people that are going to be competing in this have time because they have a twisted bow and they have max gear i think a lot of it is like they will say like okay hey, well let's just not do four mans because like if they're going for like my guess if you're going for the top spots solos up to teams of four or five would be the most competitive Oh, I think it's four. Yeah, I think it's forward pro- solos, duos, and maybe four mans would be the most competitive. Um, and so you wouldn't want like, all right, well, four mans are done. Let's just do threes, or let's just find someone to do fives and just try and get a time in that. Because this is for people yeah. that like have max gear and they also want like th- like specifically because there's more to it than just faster timings. We'll go into it more in a second. But if you're going for like winning the leaderboards and stuff, you know, it, like yeah. 
it does make it so you can set up a schedule where like, you know, we could be like, all right, guys, every Wednesdays, it's Wild Boy Wednesdays. We're going to be going in and trying to crank out some raids to see if we can compete. We do it like every Wednesday. You set up this little schedule. Again, going back to uh, comparing it to World of Warcraft, you have that with your guild because every week the raids are set. So you could be like, what most guilds do is every Tuesday and every, let's say, Friday is our raid nights. Yeah. And you would get set in these like little schedules where you're like, I got to be on so I can do it. So I guess this gives a chance for other of other clans in RuneScape to set up something like that where it's like yep. every Friday we all jump on and we're going to try to we're going to do some raids and see if we can compete. And if not, oh, well, we'll try again next Friday. Yeah. So I guess there's pros and cons to both week by week or my idea of maybe a month to month. So, yeah. Yeah. Engine work. Um, memes. So <laughs> the rewards. So why would you want to do it if you don't want times? Well, so you'll be rewarded with the standard loot, of course. And they have emphasized that they do not want to give you buffed loot for doing these challenge raids. Yeah, you're not going to get like... The chances of getting a twisted bow is not going to be easier. It's going to it's probably be harder because it's going to take you longer to get through it. The points don't become more valuable, but you will get more points within the raid because they're going to have more health and because they're going to be harder. You will get more points within the raid. So you will get more loot if you can do it properly, I guess. If you don't die yeah. and all that stuff, it could come out as more lucrative if you could do it. Um, I think this is another way to kind of... M- Maybe I, I maybe JX has been listening to the podcast, but I have been saying <laughs> that Vor, you're better off doing Vorkath than raids because you get more money and you don't spend thirty, you don't spend like sixty hours to get a harpoon and throwing axes. I'm just saying bullshit. Anyways, um, <laughs> so it, you know you're better off doing Vorkath if you're doing it for money. But so this you kind of there's the leaderboards, but you will get better money per hour if you can do it efficiently. So there's more that they want to suggest, I guess. So in addition to finishing the challenge mode, you get a chance of unlocking, obtaining an unlock for the Omelet pet, which will allow you to transmog it into the miniature versions of Tecton, Vespula, Vanguards, Metadial, or Vasa. And this unlock can be earned regardless you have the pet or not, though you'll need the actual pet to utilize it. Okay, so you could, technically, you could unlock all of them and then get the pets, you could use them. Yeah. And they actually don't specify on whether once you unlock one of the transmogs, if you'll be able to get, get all of them. I'm ki- I'm reading this, I first assumed that you would have to unlock each, every single one of them. So you could get Tecton, Tecton. They don't specify that you get one of each. It just says, it, which it allows you to transmog it into miniature versions. So it could be one of each. It could be all of them. I'd prefer to be one of each, personally. Yeah, it gives you more to grind for. You know, maybe, like, if you have a really, like, the faster you kill a boss, the better chance you have of dropping the transmog of that boss. Because they kind of want to push, like, speedrunning this, essentially. I think that would be kind of cool. I mean, obviously not have it like, oh, I beat it in under four minutes, I got it. Or, like, oh, it's five minutes, let's just redo it because we're not getting the pet. (laughs) You know, maybe uh, make that a minor influence. Anyways, so there is another thing they, they would like to add which is um once th- if this gets added into the game to be able like to get a cape that shows that you've completed 100 500 1000 1500 and 2000 of these challenge modes and it would be a cosmetic untradeable cape and the cape would just differ you know the more kills you get that is one of the poll questions and we saw this idea first get brought up with the theater of blood the new raid coming out yeah which that one passed the flying colors so then they said, okay. This one's passing by like 0.5%. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, uh, spite votes. <laughs> yeah, so there's three polls that, like, if, I mean, I'm going to tell you to to vote for that shit because I think it's, you know. Well, you can't, you can't skew it. <clears throat> Go vote for it. You, you may or may not get money from someone. May or may not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Let's buy some updates. Yeah, probably not. So the... The first poll is, should it be added in the game? The second... So, the f- by that, you mean challenge mode? Yeah. should Yeah. The first poll is, like, should challenge mode be added? The second poll is, if it's added, um, should the completion of a raid within a set amount of time offer a chance of obtaining an unlock for the pet transmog? And third one is the cape. Um, They're all passing. The first two are passing pretty well last time I checked. And the third one is barely. 
how funny would it be if the f- poll question two and three passed, but one never did? Spite votes. <laughs> That's just weird. I think a lot of this is that I have a feeling they're going to come out with Raids 2, and Raids 1 will be dead content for the most part, unless you're a solo player. Yeah, I think that's what they're worried about. It'll be like kind of how God Wars Dungeon is now, where it's like, most of the time you're just going there because it's... it's Well, Bandos is fucking packed. Try doing Bandos on the weekend. But I feel like it's more of like uh, you do it with some friends. You know what I mean? It's something easy you guys can go in there. Otherwise, there's... I'm trying to think right now. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there's probably other bosses that are worth doing, no? Um. Well, the main thing with Bandos, if you're in a four team you never and you guys are like, you know doing it properly you never have to leave you can literally stay there forever yeah that's true because a lot of them do drop like potions and health and food gussins if everyone brings gussins and you guys are like wearing max gear and stuff killing it efficiently i always got the sense of doing the god wars bosses was more like i want to do it with some friends because it's more fun otherwise you know the four of us would just be doing vorkath because it's way better money per hour yeah yeah i I feel that they 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 probably know how many people well, they 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 said they're able to know what players do when they log out and they've probably noticed a lot of raiders just doing vorkath now um mainly because like i if i'm solo raiding i always raid in one specific world just cuz good ping but i've noticed less people there and when i go do vorkath i notice some of the raiders are doing vorkath mm. and i don't know if it's a coincidence but that's something i notice where like normally i would go and as i'm banking i'd see like 10 people chilling right and you're like oh that's not bad 10 people are like waiting to jump into a raid on this specific world that's kind of cool and then sometimes mm-hmm. it's just me or like i mean obviously most likely they're in the raid but i i have noticed that like some people are now usually at vorkath when i would normally see them at raids well yeah because it's like sure you can get lucky and get that twisted bow where boom you're one bill richer or you can go to vorkath where it's like you know, legit, you'd be ma- you're not going to be losing money unless you die a bunch. But you know what yeah. I mean? It's a lot more stable income. Yeah, like I'm able to make over four mil an hour at Vorkath raids. Recently, I'm making fucking nothing. Yeah. Recently, I've been losing money doing goddamn PVM. I have to do Vorkath to make up for it. Son of a bitch. Yeah, so that's it for the updates. I'm actually really excited for challenge mode. I hope it gets passed. So I'm hoping that, like, if they do this challenge mode, it's not going to be, like, the most efficient setup. Like, I don't want to see Guardians and Mutadiles or Vasa Deshaun's, whatever it is. Like, just, like, the easiest rooms with, like, a thieving room and a tight... Or, and, and a, or sorry, a, a crab's room and a tightrope. Like, I actually want to yep. see maybe Vanguards or Vespulas in it. Like, you want to see the rooms that people often skip when they're scouting. Yeah, like, I would like... Preferably, I'd like to see Vespula because... If you can kill Vespula, like, there's actual skill in killing it faster. As in, you yeah. need someone to, like, actually understand how the boss attacks and be able to reset its, like, mechanics. Vanguards, too, because that requires actual me- communication, especially if you're in anything that's not a trio. You know what I mean? Because you mm-hmm. have to call the percentages. If it's if a Vanguard, if one of the guys fall under 30% HP, like, they have 30% less hp than someone else then they all heal the full so you kind of have to like get them in specific ranges and then pass them off to each other and hold aggro sometimes Mm -hmm. and it's one of the slower rooms but it's also more challenging but it also develops like cool things people could kind of do to you know it it, i don't know it brings on like innovation with the shittier rooms typically like you people do tecton if they have elder mauls and warhammers Vasa people do. Vasa's really easy and like there's it, there's even been innovation with that now where you bring an Abbey dagger instead of a Hasta. Oh yeah? Yeah, so it's really neat seeing even like a year after raids coming out, you see, see people bringing in like better or like yeah, different setups for different bosses and I think challenge modes like kind of going to propel that a bit more. Yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. What I would like to see is either every week for it to be a completely, no, maybe not completely randomized, but different set rooms. So, like, let's say you don't get the Vanguard room or Vespula room. I don't know all the rooms or whatever, but maybe one week you don't get those. The next week they might pop up. This way it would make it, like, every week it's going to be a different race, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then this way the t- the top time will change every single week. It might not be better than the first week. It might be might have taken longer because of the room setup, but it would make it so like let's say you see 
you know, the clan Wild Boys are always number one. And you're just like, wow, these guys are very good at the raids. They can do any, no matter what room it is, they're going to be top number every single time. Boom. Like, oh, that's probably one of the more prestigious clans or groups of people. It's kind of cool to see that. The other option I think that they should go, which I'm not as much of a fan of this, but I don't think they should. I guess these are the only two options they could do. The second option is every single room, every single time. Yeah. Um, the only issue with that is once you get like Vanguard's Devassa, so you get like literally the four hardest boss rooms, like Vanguard's Vespula, Tecton, and Vasa. And then let's say you get like Ice Demon and like Thieving Room, which are like the slower ones, the slowest skilling rooms. People are like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not doing it this week. Yeah, because they're going to take a lot longer after the blast through. Yeah, so they haven't really, I guess it's just being pulled. They don't want to put in too much effort. That's the thing. You put in too much detail, people might go, oh, well, I don't like that part of it, so I'm just going to vote no. Yeah. But if you kind of make it more vague, it gives them to kind of tinker with it as they go. Yeah. Or, like, let's say they did pull, like, it's going to be every single room, and then it passes, and then they're like, well, you know, it kind of went last man standing, and it was good for the first month, and then after that, people stopped caring about challenge mode. Yeah. Then it's hard for them to change it, because people are like... Well, what the fuck? You got to pull this. You got to pull the changes now, even though we're seeing them doing doing these game integrity poll, not not even polls, just game integrity updates where they don't pull them and they're just going to go ahead and change them, which is, I agree with that. Regardless of this, if this passes or this fails, it kind of is weird. So people do complain about the polling. So let's say, okay, people complain about how like the polling works. So let's say that challenge modes is actually really bad for the game, all right? I'm biased because I think it would be cool, and, like, I can actually, like, I'm going to day one try and experience the content. Well, I'll, like, I'll go in and do solos and shit, right? Even if people don't want to do it with me because I'm a little bitch boy. <laughs> it's it's actually really bad for the game because it's now 10 mil an hour, and people, like, Twisted Bow goes down to 600 mil because the people are getting them so much. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even though they'd probably go up in price, let's be real. It's kind of weird that everyone's able to vote on content that not many people actually do goes same thing with pvp though right like same thing with pking even though i was against a lot of the updates i mean i'm experiencing it now and i can see now how like rev caves is kind of nice because you can oh i'm bored i want to find someone go to rev caves it's good to keep in mind they have have had to nerf it because of how good money it was yeah exactly um but like in general it is kind of weird that like there is content in this game that will never affect you, and so therefore, well, not like you specifically, but someone, it won't affect someone, and they'll just vote no. Or vote yes, depending if it's actually good for the game or not. That's the problem. Like, what happens where, like, I agree the problem comes when, like, people who are never going to PK, or even, like, they they just don't step in the wilderness, they can vote no on these things that might change the way things work in the wilderness. But at the same time, what happens when something is super overpowered coming into like the PVP community and they're just like, well, yeah, I want to be able to kill people faster. Yeah. And they're just like, well, this is really, b- let's buff the granite mall. You know what I mean? It's just like, and everyone says, okay, yeah, let's do that. Cause I want to be able to kill easier with this granite mall. Suddenly you're like, well, that's really bad for the game. People are being very selfish and they're not thinking of the game as a whole. They're thinking about their own personal accounts. Main reason, main reason why I bring this up is that like, so the Cape is, it could fail easily could fail i don't think the challenge mode will fail it's like it's pretty it's it's got a healthy margin of like getting put in and the second question with the transmutation the transmog of omelet is in a pretty good spot too like i don't know why this cape wouldn't be added into the game because the only thing i see from it is that it will always give someone a reason to do it if they're going for cosmetics yeah um, cause getting like 100, like 100 or 2000, like that's, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big achievement, mm-hmm. but like, are people voting no? Because it's like now people will only do challenge mode. Is that why? Like, I mean, not the Cape, but like, you know, just in general, like, is it bad because people only want to do challenge modes now? Is there a reason to do non challenge modes? Yeah, that's that one. I don't completely understand either. It would be kind of nice if you had to put in why did you vote this you know what i mean yeah and we have discussed this in the past though but who 
you know, what are you going to do? Bring in an intern to go and sit sit there for eight hours a day looking through all the responses? Well, they're not all going to be like, well, good question, Jagex. I believe this is healthy for, like, it's more 90% of them are going to be like, you're stupid, lol, Jagex dumb. Like that, and then they yeah, can, like... Yeah, it's going to be like, I voted no because fuck you. I mean, you can add filters and then just say your vote doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'd like to see, like, a some sort of, like, a change the polls even like if this passes and it's bad for the game i'll still say the same like right now i'm down for it they're probably gonna pass but it is kind of weird that like we have three questions for this poll like that's it we have three questions and it just affects like a very very minor uh population of the game yeah that's it's it's a weird thing and like part of me wishes that there's just certain things the jagex mods should just go we're not pulling this you're getting you're gonna get challenge raids Oh, sorry, you're going to get challenge mode in raids. Yep. And I'm sure a lot of people wish they could put the faith into the J mods so that they could deliver us quality content without having to worry if the community is going to agree with it or not because they know it's going to be good. If you look in the past, back in like the 2005 era, there was never polls. And they always, they brought some really good content because I guess they didn't have to worry about it. And on top of that, they just knew what was good for the game. But as we all know, there's been a few times where they were kind of they started losing touch with the player base and brought some really bad updates yeah so this is a way to come combat that but it it would you know some things would be nice for them to just be like hey we're bringing in the challenge mode we're going to keep an eye on it and we're going to nerf it or buff it as needed until it hits the spot that we want it to but like the main thing is is that the concept of this challenge modes could kill raids that's the thing that's why it would be nice for them to be like hey we know what's best for the game because we're making it's our game. We're making it. I think we all wish we could put the faith in them for that. It sounds weird because it's their game, right? Yeah. We're just playing it. It's a community driven game specifically. So I can see why they pull everything. But the only thing like, I, I, I think this is cool. I keep saying this. I think Challenge Mode is cool, but mainly it's because I'm able to like do it day one or like try it day one and like have some success, at least, you know, get some results, whether it's, uh, like wow, I'm actually slow at doing raids in general, or like, th- wow, this is really good money. This is better money. Like the main thing is that doing raids one, like raids one, like Xerix as is, is already a high entry. Mm-hmm. Like if you're actually going wanting to contribute and be like a, and do raids and like have a team and not just kind of leech the whole time, you kind of have to get like minimum elite void you have to get a dragon warhammer like there's like a lot of things that you have to get oh yeah you're gonna be competing against groups of all maxed players with max gear yeah so the main thing is if you want to do challenge modes instead of it being yeah just get elite void you know all three of them minimum with uh, maybe fury occult dragon warhammer now it's gonna be max your account make sure you have warhammer and rigor and like if you don't have a twisted bow, at least a dragon hunter crossbow. You're gonna need bandos, ancestral switches, and armor switches. Like you're gonna need like this, and then it turns like the entry to like actually find good teams. This will be putting a competitive scene within the PVM community. Yeah, I mean, as of right now, raids is kind of com- like you join the we do raids. I like I left the Discord eventually because I was tr- I was doing some we do raids, and I like joined up with the dude. And we both got annoyed because people kept joining that were, like, skillers. We'd have skillers join and be like, all right. It's like, no, dude, we don't want skillers in our fucking, in our raid. What the hell? But I got recoils. I have 90 herb lore. Yeah, we both do. We don't We don't need a <laughs> skiller. Like, all you're going to do is just, you're going to catch bats for points. You're going to boost your own points by sitting there and catching bats and making us eat it. And wait for us to get the seeds and give them to you and then make you a chest and then get you secondaries and then you make stuff that we can already do ourselves you know what i mean i mean my my experience with that specific discord is like kind of weird what we talked about in the past how there was a bunch of drama and they had to shut or somebody shut some shit down over there everyone i ask has had a good experience maybe i'm just unlucky but i have found really weird groups where like people have like over 100 kill count but they have no idea what they're doing and they die like eight fucking times and then they expect to split the non-unique loots and they get mad at you. Like I've had some really weird experiences with We Do Raids. So like now I find it's better to just do it on my own. But like I bring that up because now with the challenge modes, you're going to find 
even more strict things as of right now. I don't know. I guess I'm just rehashing what I just said. <laughs> but that being said, I, I'm still excited for this. Yeah, I, I am too. It's basically, by all definition, some end game content. I think Jagex is desperate to kind of hold. I feel like the a lot of the player base has expanded. A lot of people have started getting into the game, but now we're hitting the point where a lot of people are getting bored with the game and stop playing. In terms of like, once you go through all the mid to high level con, or like low to mid content, you start hitting that high content, and it starts getting stale. Your options yeah. get very limited, as opposed to like skilling for the sake of skilling. Doing bosses for the sake of bossing. Yeah, killing Vorkath just for just for the money so you can buy some item. Do raids for some money and some fun. Do Vorkath for some money. Do some God Wars Dungeon for some fun. And this gives it a chance for like, hey, I have all my max gear. You know, when Theater of Blood comes out, the second raid, people are going to be doing that. Once they get all the best gear, it's going to be like, well, now what? Well, we can always keep competing making our our clan look like top dogs in the PVM community. Yeah, by doing doing these races every week. It'll be cool to see. I'm yeah, I'm I'm hoping the best for it. That being said, do you want to uh, move on to random topic/community slash community stuff? Yeah, some things, some other things going on within the community. So, this has passed, but you know what? I'll just throw it in here. If you were playing Wednesday, April 18th, well, you might not have been playing because the serv- some many of the servers went down due to maintenance. We don't see that too often, but yeah, they brought them down just to do some tinkering. Yeah, I noticed the servers recently have been kind of fucking shitty. Yeah. A lot of like not like disconnects, but you know, server freezes up for like three seconds. I was like killing Vorkath tick eating. Server froze up for like five seconds. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm going to die and there's so much shit on the ground right now. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But like, I've noticed that happening a lot recently. I don't know if like maybe there's just too much, too many pe- pe- people playing. I don't, I don't really know what's going on with the servers. Maybe they fucked up maintenance and they just made it worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never really know, I suppose. The next thing I had seen was we've seen a proposal for old school RuneScape for a new game mode called Group Iron Man mode. This was basically a new. It's basically what it sounds like. It's Iron Man mode, but you do it with a group of people, and you can't trade other people or use the Grand Exchange, but you can trade from the people in your group. So, for instance, if, let's say, the five five people were out there as a group, and somebody gets two Bandos chest plates, he's able to give one of those away to somebody else. A lot of people were kind of excited or were looking forward to something like that being brought into the game. A lot of people were the opposite and kind of thought, what's the point of it? It seems pointless. And eventually, there was a. it turned out there's a bunch of problems with the engine. Some engine work needed to be done in order for this to come out because with player IDs and all this other stuff, it would take a lot more work than, than they wanted. Anyways, RuneScape 3 came out with a poll this week discussing group Iron Man mode. So it looks like that is something they're going to be bringing into their game. It has a bunch of questions like, do you want to release? What's the, what should the size of the group be? And then it goes into questions about bossing and what happens when a member leaves and recruiting new members and stuff like that. So I thought I wanted to bring it up because I know some people do want it to come out and RuneScape 3 is bringing it out. So maybe in the future we'll be seeing a poll as well once they can figure out this whole player ID bullshit. Yeah. But yeah, that seemed to be... That's all that I had seen going on this week that's worth mentioning. I have a question for you. Have you done like chinchampa hunting or anything like that? I have in the past, not recently. Did you ever try tick manipulating? No, I've never tried tick manipulating anything. Like I maybe have tried it and I didn't I did not have fun doing it trying to figure it out, so I don't do that stuff. <laughs> True. So this week I did a bunch of like hunt well, a bunch, but I went I got like seventy three to seventy nine hunter this week. And I was doing black chins. Okay. So, like, I did red chins without t- tick manipulating up to black chins, and it yep. was, like, really fucking annoying because you're constantly, so if, if you're going to, I'll back up a bit, if you're trying to, like, hunt efficiently, you you place your traps around a spawn of one of the chinchampas, right? Just black or, or, or red, 
if if it like escapes in your like your box that you put it in, you just kill it and reset it. But then other chins will wander and you know jump in. It's like just a fast way to kind of do it. And if you're mm-hmm. not tick manipulating, I noticed it was like constantly one or two traps I have to like keep setting. Like I'm constantly really behind on the traps. Yep. So I tried tick manipulating, and like. I actually found it was less stressful and obviously you get way more experience. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of thought it was weird because I always like thought it was like, man, how the fuck do people do it? How do people like take manipulate Hunter? I mean, keep in mind, I only do it for like an hour at a time, hour or two. Like once I start kind of like getting really bored of it or my wrist starts to like, you know, feel weird or something, I'll uh just stop. It kind of made it more fun. Like, I don't know. It just made hunting way more than just like box 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 you know what i mean like it was kind of cool to take manipulate i don't know i'd I'd never really actually sat down and like did it until like i guess this week and i don't know i just want to know if you'd done it what your thoughts were no that's not something i have done but i do know a lot of tick manipulating goes on with other things such as fishing and then there's wood cutting and mining and a lot of the the skilling clans and like the high level skillers who are going for like 200 mil, they're constantly, that's basically what you're doing to get to achieve the best experience rates per hour. Do you want to kind of talk about what tick manipulating is or tell us how you tick manipulated hunting or the box traps? So tick manipulating is like using an action, like doing another action to kind of cancel out the one that you want to focus on. I believe, like I'm not a hundred percent, I haven't really like looked into how it works within the game, but I believe it's like, because everything has like, you know, a couple ticks within the game. There's those ticks of like 0.6 seconds for like an action to kind of occur. And I believe it works. If you start an action that requires more ticks than the current action you want to do, Hmm. I believe that's how it goes in short though. You're pretty much clicking something every single tick. So you're just like, like you're kind of just clicking pretty consistently. That's pretty much it. You just click every tick when you're doing actions. So what I do is I um, have a Guam's and Tar. I bring like when I was like doing Black Chin specifically, I'd bring one clean Guam, and then I'd bring um, either like a Terraman or a Hairland, or I'd just bring like dirty Guam's with me, and then Swamp Tar and a Pestle and Mortar, and that's how you make like the um, the ammo for like the Salamanders. I believe that's how you make it, at least. I'm not too sure. Uh, I haven't re- used a salamander since they came out back in the day. I don't think anyone does. Yeah, with the yeah. So what I would do is I would start the action of you know making the Guam tar, and then I would like move to my spot that I want to lay my trap, and then I lay it. So normally you would click a trap, and then you like you place it on the ground, you crouch, and then you like wait a couple ticks, and then you like build it. Okay. Me doing like. The Guam stuff, you would do it and then you like move to the spot that you want to drop it and it instantly drops. Right. You save like like one point like I was saving like on average one point two seconds if I just wasn't fucking up. Um I was I wasn't like doing it like I don't know. It's weird. There's like a lot of different ways you can like tick ma- tick manipulate specifically like that and get different outcomes. So like running to one's running two squares total and dropping it gives you like a better result than just walking or even doing it on top of the square but you can get like you can save like depending on how you do like one to three ticks i believe or one or two ticks which like you know you save like a second every time you're doing it it ends up getting you way better results and it's less stressful because i i like the shittiest feeling for me when i was doing hunter it was like all the um boxes that i have to set up and i can't keep up with it but like when i was tick manipulating they were always up and i was able to like keep my boxes up, go use my imp in a box to bank my chins and come back, and, like, they're not all fucking on the ground. You know what I mean? Well, are you sure it's less stressful? I mean, you click more, but you are you don't, like, while you're doing it, you click more, but, like, there's more downtime, I guess, in terms of, like, you don't have to worry about boxes. Okay, because I'm, I'm getting stressed out just listening to you. That sounds, ugh, that sounds brutal, man. It's not bad. I think the thing is, the main reason I want to bring it up is that everyone kind of like looks at it. We're like, oh, only fucking losers do that. I don't know. Like the only like, like hyper efficient, like elitists do it. But like, I've only done hunter. I've never done mining or uh, fishing. 
And for like, I guess fishing and mining, well, I guess fishing's different because you, I, I like to AFK it, but Hunter, you have to sit there and stare at your screen, especially if you're doing black chins in the wilderness. Yeah. Like you have to pay full attention. So you might as well just click like a couple extra times and get it done way faster. And there's less like chasing boxes and checking them and dismantling and relaying them. Like there's less of that. It's more clicking, but like less of like, you have to keep all your boxes up. And I found like, I didn't mind doing red chins, but like I didn't tick manipulate it at all. And I kind of hated how like, how like infrequent the breaks were. Like if I was taking like a second break or, you know what I mean? It would literally, while I'm laying a box, I'd have to do something like put on a song. You know what I mean? Sure. But like, I don't know. I just found it was, it was like much better and like more enjoyable, I guess. Cause I was able, like I'm already being forced to focus a hundred percent. Yeah. Fair enough. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I just kind of want to leave that out there. If you have the option to like do it with Hunter or something, fishing, whatever you want to do, and you like don't really want, I don't know. It doesn't hurt to try it out. It's um kind of annoying. So basically, to- you're saying if you want to be leveling up a skill, you may as well try it because you might, you might not hate it as much as you think you will. Yeah, exactly. And it gets the job done faster, which is always nice. That is true. That is true. Yeah, I, don't know, I just want to bring that up. I don't really have anything else to talk about though. Yeah, no, no problem. It's uh, interesting because it's not something I've ever actually tried. Like I've, I never w- spent like a long time doing it. You know what I mean? Like I would try it once and fucking fuck up and make a guitar or something like that. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm done. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Having good ping does all- obviously help. Like if you have like if you're really laggy, if you're like Australian or something, it might not even be possible <laughs> just because you're so <laughs> yeah. laggy. But yeah, cool, it's good stuff. But yeah, that's all I have as well, which means. It is our time to move on to our lore. Last week, we talked about the Third Age, where we saw an all-out war break out on Gilinor. We saw the gods and their armies cause major destruction across the lands, and we saw the fall of the great Zerosian Empire. These events were known as the God Wars which ended when Guthix awoke from his hibernation and put a stop to the chaos. The Third Age ended on approximately the year 10,000. Which brings us to the topic this week, the Fourth Age, also known as the Age of Mortals. During this age, we see more accurate records being taken. During this time, there were only a few cities populated by civilized humans. These cities were Seranthium, which was built on the ruins of Senetson, where the dig site sits today, Meyerditch, which at this time is the most populated city with humans, but it is still ruled by vampires, and a handful of small settlements throughout the Caridian Desert. Besides these areas, the majority of humans lived as barbarian tribes. For a moment, gnomes returned to the surface after hiding underground during the God Wars. The elves leave the area of Turanon and ruled majority of the area that we know as the Kingdom of Kandaran. And the Tazar make their first contact with people of the surface during this age. As I had mentioned, there are more accurate records taken with documented dates. Some still conflict with records from previous ages. And that is something I will touch on. From the years 1 to 200, the druids who are worshippers of Guthix built two different holy sites known as stone circles to worship their god. One can be found in Taverly, which today is served as their primary worship site. The second can be found in Verok, where the druids will eventually lose possession of this holy site in future years. On the 31st year, an astronomer named Scorpius and his apprentice, Phyrus, begin to map out the constellations, which would later serve as the tool to create the calendar that all of Gilinor follows. On year 60, Scorpius was persecuted for his craft and knowledge, which caused much of his information to be lost. The calendar used in RuneScape today has 365 days in a year, but only has 10 months, ranging between 31 to 39 days in each of the months. These months are named Rintra, Moving, Benath, Raktuber, Pentember, Fentuary, Septober, Ire of Phyrus, Novtumber, and lastly, Windtumber. 
In the year 169, the 14th ritual rejuvenation takes place amongst the moderate race, where they sacrifice one to remain their powers. Between the year 200 and the year 500, human barbarian tribes hunted the gnome race to near extinction, causing them to retreat to hidden settlements. The year 659, the city of Great Karend on the continent of Zaya is found by King Rada I. On the year 700, a tribe finds a baby abandoned and took it as a good omen. They settled in this area, and this baby eventually became a famous hero named Arav. This settlement will later develop into a city named Averaka, which in future time will be renamed Verak, making it the oldest surviving human settlement outside of the Caridian Desert on Gilinor today. Between the years 750 and 850, the people of Verak begin to conquer neighboring tribes and eventually having full control of the region. This region would soon be named Mistalin. Between the year 800 and the year 1000, the kingdom of Asgarnia was founded and the settlement Falador begins to develop. Between the year 900 and the year 1000, the government of Verak changes to a monarchy. This is to be believed when Verak was renamed from Avaraka. During this same time, the dwarves learn that the god wars have ended and a small number begin to resurface. Between the years 1100 and the years 1200, creatures from Mauritania attack Mistalin. Conflicting records show that the seven priestly warriors fought in this battle, defeating them, blessing the river Salve, causing creatures of Zamorak to be unable to pass. Although I have stated that there are also records stating the seven priestly warriors died during the Third Age, and it is unknown which records are correct. Between the years 1139 and 1239, the Dark Mage Zarek firmly asserts his power over Great Karend, where he remained in power for a hundred years. Eventually, a rebellion began and overthrew Zarek. A new king was placed in power, known as King Byron I. In the year 1650, the ruler, King Alvis, of the dwarven city Keldegrim, dies. In his place, an organization of multiple dwarven mining companies takes power of the city. During this time, the dwarves reach their golden age, where many technological advancements are made. This includes the invention of steam-powered boats, trains, and factories to smelt ore. In the year 1777, settlements were constructed in Mauritania. These settlements were Canifis, Port Phasmatis, and Fankenstrain's Castle. Eventually, these settlements became dominions of the vampires who ruled in the city of Meyer Ditch. In the year 1937, the town of Lumbridge was found in Mistelin, as well as the city al Karid, but ran independently of Mistelin. Between the years 1969 and 1989, civil war breaks out in Great Karend, where King Karids I succeeds and takes the throne. And finally, in the year 2000, humans discover Rune Essence, which allows them to harness magic and leads to their dominance on the world. Which brings us to the end of the Fourth Age, ending on the historical calendar date of the year 12,000. And as I just mentioned, this age ends with the discovery of magic by humans. Next week, we'll be looking at the Fifth Age, which means we will be wrapping up this series of taking a look at all the different ages in the history of RuneScape. All right, now it's time for us to start winding this thing up. But before we get out of here, there's a few things going on within the show, or should I say our little community that is some people might be interested in. So we have two little events being kind of prepped right now. Not we, Me and Deegan have nothing to do with these. These are held by basically friends of the show. People are hanging out in the Clan Chan Discord. They take it upon themselves to kind of do these events for everyone else, which is it's fucking awesome to see, to be honest. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, some really cool and unique things going on. So one of the first events being prepped is is a little, I shouldn't say little, but a draw party being planned by 
someone you may recognize as Sinister RNG. He's uh, wanting to throw a little drop party for everybody. So we're planning on probably about two weeks from now on the weekend, but that's something we will be given updates on on the Discord and Twitter and probably the next show if it's if we have more details for the next one. But yeah, he's planning on doing a pretty big drop party, a bunch of different items, god swords, occults, furies, dragon chain bodies. He told me he has 500 plus items so far ready to drop. Damn. And it's going to be at least 50 mil, he said. So that's fucking, that's intense. That's So yeah, keep your eyes and ears out for that thing. And it's not something you want to miss out on. But as we said, we'll give you more updates and more details as we get them on some of those things I just mentioned and maybe next week's recording. And bringing us on to the second event. And this is a, seems like a more regular event now. I don't know how it's a more regular event, but fuck it, I'm not the one in charge of this shit, right? So Black our Blacksmith Bully is doing another weapon giveaway. So we've seen him so far do a Dragon Dagger, a Dwarf Cannon, a Dragon Battle Axe, and this time he is planning on doing a giveaway for a Dragon Warhammer. Now this isn't an in-game Dragon Warhammer. This is an actual item you'll be able to have at your house and this is planned on coming up in the next couple weeks as well we're gonna iron out the details more on how you can win this one but if you do win it he will mail it to you and you'll receive your dragon warhammer so yeah that's another really cool really awesome giveaway being done by uh our blacksmith bully yeah another name you may recognize i i don't know where he finds the time to make these Hell, I'd, I'd, I'd spend a year having to fucking smelt one of these things. Yeah, I, I don't even know where I would begin, personally. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Start contracting someone else to make it? Yeah. And then looking at the bill of how much it's going to cost, and you're like, ah. Oh. All right, guys, I have a GoFundMe. <laughs> so you're basically going to be paying for lottery tickets. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I want to thank the two of them for doing these two events. That's It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool and kind of brings a unique thing we can have going on within the within our little clan chat and Discord. And I don't know, it's always a fun time to do these little events. I, I just kind of show up and just hang out. As much as I would love to win some of these things, I don't want to have... We don't want to have our own little mod jet instance happening between one of us, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I won one and, you know, I'll tap Uh-oh. out. <laughs> yeah. Tap out while I'm ahead. Yeah, it might not be too good for the show. Or, who knows, maybe we'll get a lot of plubis, plub, eh, publicity from one of the, those those conspiracies going on. Maybe yeah. we'll get a YouTube video made about us. It's the long con. But anyways, yeah, thanks again to you to the two of them throwing these events. And again, neither of us had any hand in any of these things. These are both their ideas, and we just kind of help out where we can. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. But anyways, it's about time we wrap this thing up, wind her down for the night. If you're looking to keep up to date with some of these events or the show in general or want to hang out with some people in game, whatever it is, our in-game clan chat is WildCC. Our Twitter is at the Wilderness RS. Our email is at the Wilderness Oh shit. Our email is the Wilderness Podcast at gmail.com. Facebook is Facebook.com slash the Wilderness Podcast, all one word. So is the email. And our Discord is posted on both Twitter and Facebook. But if you're having trouble finding those, you can let one of us know and we will get you a link to come join. Yeah. And that's it for the show. What about you, Deegan? What do you got? Um, Twitch and Twitter is DeeganRS. Twitter is pretty vacant. I, I don't know what people use Twitter for. Twitch, um, I kind of I'm kind of infrequent as of right now. Um but if I go live, it's usually PVM content. Did did a little PVP content too, but you can uh, follow for a future challenge mode stream. Yeah, you can see that one going on in the flesh. All right, what do you say we get out of here? Yeah, I think it's time. Cool. Okay. Thanks so much for listening to episode eighty-one, and next week we're at eighty-two. Yeah, getting there. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye.